everybody. Hi, everybody. Everybody have a good day. It's almost the end of another week. It was, it was a busy day, Miss Lisa. Very busy. I am You're thankful. thankful, but tired. Nobody wants to hear the feedback on that. There we go. I have proceeded to walk around here and see if I can break as many machines as possible so that I can have all the possible fixes and troubleshoots that I can do for you. I haven't sewn today either, Miss Laurie, except to break some machines. Yes, we will take some time off. We're actually going to close on Monday, which would be Easter Monday, which we normally um, are not open for. So I will have Saturday and Sunday. I mean, Sunday and Monday. We'll be here tomorrow. We'll be here Friday and Saturday. And then we're going to... Take Sunday and Monday to regroup and to energize ourselves. Yes, <laughs> re energize myself and mom. And I've got to figure out what we're going to do for the Kimberville Day at the fair event um, at the end of April. So I'm trying to come up with a game plan for that event for you guys. There's still openings on Friday. <laughs> yeah, we still have availability. Friday it may Friday. all be. Friday. Friday all be done via online and in your own homes. We'll mail the kits to everybody um, if that's one option. The other option is postponing um, for later, but I know you all are anxiously awaiting for um, these designs and this event, so I don't know if I wanna put it off much longer. I know you're all very experienced embroiderers and that we can do this together from miles and miles and miles away. So we're, um, <clears throat> hi Grady, Mimi loves you. Brush your teeth really well and go to bed so mommy can come watch. Now I had a note around here with all of my list of what I was going to show. Did you bring it? I thought I brought it over here with me. It's on a um, flamingo notepad piece of paper, mom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm. I can't. And the sun's coming in that window. Um. I keep losing everything. I don't know where I've put it all. I, I made a note to keep myself organized so I don't forget what I want to talk about. But yet I can't seem to keep track of the note. So as soon as we find that, we will chat. But. Oh. In the meantime, for those of you that have been in this store recently, and specifically we're here for the World of Embroidery event, you know that we held it in our new event space classroom thing. Well, we had the floors finally finished, were buffed, scrubbed, and polished, so I thought you may like to see how shiny they are now. It's so pretty. I don't almost don't want to walk on it. We're slowly putting everything back into the unit. Um, and organizing it. And yes, maybe one day while we're on this quarantine, those will all get labeled and priced and advertised for sale. That is almost 15 years worth of samples in that corner that haven't found a home yet. So maybe we're getting there. Okay, uh, we have found our note here. <clears throat> So tonight, what I want to do is um, I want to cover a couple of 
machine troubleshooting issues, some things that you can look at um, as you try to figure it out to help keep the frustration level down. I know that everybody is in a whirlwind of sewing and exciting um, it, it, with expectations of people wanting stuff and so on and so forth. So we're just seeing a pretty big increase in this types of things, as well as we're seeing an increase of new sewers that um, don't know exactly what to do when they get an error message or even what to look for. So I thought I would take a little bit of time tonight and go over this little list of things that I have um, encountered or find um, will help you. And I will go over some cleaning and oiling of the Bernina machines, but I'm sure that in your owner's manual, if you don't have a Bernina, that it will um, cover a lot of that cleaning and maintenance because not every machine needs oil, um, every brand. The Berninas do because we are front-loading bobbins, metal on metal. <clears throat> in there, a lot of drop-in bobbin machines um, don't call for oil and don't have you oil, but it does need cleaned because it does get linty in there. So um, that's just a, a tip for you. So <clears throat> let's talk about birds nesting for a second. Um, birds nesting is typically um, appears, you could be sewing along beautiful, you're stitching on top of the machine, on top of your fabric looks great, but on the underside, it's a hot mess. And typically what most of us do is we take our bobbin out, we put our bobbin back in and we start sewing again and it doesn't fix anything. So when you're having an issue with the underside of your fabric, a lot of times the issue is the upper threading of the machine. Okay, so there's a couple of things to look at. First being, is your take-up lever threaded? And is it threaded correctly um, is the question. So everybody should know, um, let me turn the camera around here. Your take-up lever, it's harder to see here in the Bernina, in this particular Bernina, is this little guy right here that when you thread the upper portion of the machine, you kind of go around and pop into. Let me uh, go over here. You can see it a little more on this machine here that you can see. I'm going to um, take this screw out here. Uh, I'm, I think I got it for a moment. We're going to unscrew this so that I can show you. Now, most of my Berninas, you all have this screw here on the side of your machine. Not my 8 Series Berninas, um, but you have a different access door. And I'll specifically talk about troubleshooting those machines in a moment. All right, I'm going to hand this camera to Mom so that she can focus on this so that I can have both hands. Okay. Okay. This is the only screw I give you permission to remove in your machine, just so you know, okay? With most Berninas, you got this little torque driver, okay? And it can be used for this screw. And then it may take a little bit of jiggling, but this could come out. This is a way that if you do have a jam in the upper portion of this machine and you can't get a hold of your thread right there, you can get in here to get access to it. So when we um, thread a machine, if you put that on for me, this is your take-up lever. So if this lever here does not get threaded, um, you have no way of the machine pulling the thread back up from the bobbin area. Okay. So, and all the machine is doing as you're sewing along is it's just cramming thread down in the bobbin and nothing is being pulled back up. So if this guy's not threaded, that's why it may look beautiful on top, but it's not going to look pretty on the underside. The other thing is, is that it can get partially threaded, but it doesn't get pulled all the way into the eye. Okay. It needs to, you need to kind of feel a pop or, um, a click when you when you jump it in here. So this is the first place that you look to make sure this is threaded. 
The second place that you look if you're having issues with tension is, did I get it in my upper tension discs? And when you're threading your upper tension, you need to make sure, one, that your presser foot on the machine is in the up position. If you thread your machine with the foot down, these tension discs, let me get my stiletto here. These tension discs, this one right here, and then there's another one right here, are closed if your foot is in the down position. And then therefore, when you bring your thread over them, they won't lay inside the tension disc and you'll sew and you'll look like you won't have any tension on your thread. Now, even if your presser foot is in the up position and you thread, we're seeing this a lot on five series machines, is it doesn't get pulled in down into this tension disc. And so when I thread, let me have mom hold this again. When I thread, I'm putting a little bit of tension on the thread as it comes off the spool. I'm gonna come up from underneath and as I come forward, I'm pulling on it so that it comes down. And so I'm pulling back as I'm pulling forward to help these two kind of definitely pop into place. Okay, so that's another issue that you can have with upper tension, okay? With your bobbin on the machine, the first thing that you want to look at at the bobbin is what does it look like wound? This is not a good bobbin. It's a hot mess, okay? Not evenly wound, not pretty. It's very loose like I can, yep, still got one thumbnail, Wendy. Um, I can stick my finger inside that thread and get it in there. There is no tension whatsoever on this bobbin. So typically what happens when you're winding a bobbin is when you're going around the bobbin winder, you, you're wrapping around, but you're not getting it between this metal tensioner that's here, okay? So I always go from the back up underneath. We're going to go around and I, again, kind of put a little tension and yank to make sure that the thread pops in here, okay? Most brands and machines are going to tell you the order in which they need to wind and then you just follow that thread path. So if you don't get into this tensioner, that will cause an issue. Now, I'm going to travel slowly over here not to make anybody ill. Most Berninas and other brands may have more than one spool pin. Okay. So we have a horizontal and you have a vertical. Now, on Bern most Berninas, we can wind bobbins. They're on their own motors, so they engage without stepping on any gas. If your machine is threaded to the machine on your horizontal spool pin and you want to wind a bobbin from another spool, we would put our foam pad on our vertical spool pin, okay? So this foam pad is designed to give you a give your spool a thread a little less friction of rubbing on the spool pin as well as to sit flat you're going to thread from the spool pin to this guide okay and then follow to your bobbin tensioner and then back to your bobbin do not go from here to back here if your machine is threaded with other thread because they'll get entangled with each other here and that'll just create another mess. So that's what this little metal guide is for on Berninas, okay? Most, I think, uh, at least all of the ones that I, in the last 17 years, most models have this particular um, little um, thread guide there, okay? Now, when it comes to putting a bobbin in a bobbin case, okay? So, we have lots of bobbin cases, okay? I'm good, wait a second. Now, get a bobbin on here. Doesn't matter what, we're going to talk first about the old-fashioned Bernina um, 
but or any CB hooks, okay? Classic hooks, okay? They use bobbin cases. Whether your bobbin case looks like this with the little stitch finger on it, or you have a bobbin case that has an opening with no finger on it. When you're loading a bobbin in either one of these bobbin cases, your th bobbin needs to spin clockwise from the back, okay? So <clears throat> when you put it in, your thread should spin clockwise when you pull on that thread. So whether it's the opening in the bobbin case or the stitch finger, it should be at 12 o'clock. And then when you pull your thread, the dots in your bobbin or the thread should pull clockwise when you're looking at it from the back. Now, the newer Berninas, your four, five, and seven series Berninas that have this style of bobbin case, we've kind of built in a foolproof way with this bobbin because it only goes in the case one way. So because of that, and the reason they did that is because this bobbin goes in counterclockwise. Okay, so it's counterclockwise. We're gonna pull it into the slit and you're gonna work it all the way around, making sure that you pass underneath this tension disc. Okay, and then on a seven series, we pull up four, five, and seven. Let me um, get this. So again, thread clockwise, pull your tail to the slit, feed it around the tensioner, so that it comes out the top of the bobbin case. Now, bobbin cases, this touching this screw is a no-no. Don't do it, okay? This is true bobbin tension on your bobbin. Um, when you hold it, it should not really move unless you have to really jiggle it to get it to fall. If you adjust this for different thread thicknesses, thinner or thicker, and you want to go back to regular sewing. It's not just a matter of coming in and being like, oh, I can remember where that screw was at. So you want to leave it alone, okay? If you're having issues with feeling like there is no tension on this bobbin case, take a piece of dental floss or even a piece of thread and floss it underneath of this tension clip. It is possible that there could be a buildup of dust, a dust bunny, a dust elephant, that's inside of this clip that's keeping it from being able to apply the right amount of pressure, okay? That's bobbin thread. All right, I will, if you have questions, just put them in the comment section and I will um, go back to them in just a moment, okay, when we're finished. Tray. Yeah, my, my um, tray. Spool caps. Make sure that you're using um, a spool cap that fits closest in size to the spool of thread because using too big of a spool cap can cause extra tension. Let me get this turned. Um, extra tension on the spool that's not absolutely necessary. So you always want to make sure that you're using the one that fits closest in size to the spool. So with this spool, I would, I personally would be using this itty bitty one because it slides in flush. You could use this, this medium cap because these get easily flung across the room and get lost. With this small spool, I would use this, this particular one, not this one. It's just too much space. You're adding too much height to the thread to get up and over. And then with the R fill spools, again, I like to use this itty bitty tiny one because it slides in flush. There's no um, impeding of the spool cap at all. So just a little bit about spool caps. The other thing about thread is which spool pin do you use? And a lot of that um, will depend upon how thread is put on a spool. So you have thread that's crosswound. So that crosswound thread, when you look at it, it's got this zigzagging pattern to it. And then you have thread that's what we call stacked, which there is no zigzag crisscross. A lot of your variegateds are stacked. Coates and Clark, um, uh, most of the superior thread line, bottom line masterpiece, they're stacked spools. Crosswound spools have been engineered to work best 
on your horizontal spool pin laying down. Okay, they will work standing up, but they um, work best laying down. And you can, then the thread just pulls right off without any issue, tension all the way across. Stacked threads really operate better standing up on your spool pin, okay? So again, take your foam pad, operate your spool standing up and pull it across. If you're having issues with a thread, take it from laying down to standing up. If it's standing up this way and you're having problems, flip it around and thread the machine the other direction. With our fill, remember the ends come off so you can flip the end. You can also use our fill without that end cap on it, okay? It's complete, completely up to you. Yeah, don't get rid of it because then you'll have no idea what color it is. But um, it will be there for you. If you're having issues with thread falling off the back of a spool, so for example, on specifically embroidery machines, you will get thread that when you look at it is looping all the way down around the bottom of the machine to the point that when you're sitting here, you can see the thread, okay? That's not the best. What's gonna happen is eventually, it's gonna twist itself into a knot. It could jump out of this upper tension disc so when you're having a problem with this happening on spools, and it happens a lot with embroidery thread due to the, just the plain silkiness of it. It's closed. We're gonna clip the bottom closed on isocord. You're gonna take your thread net, you're gonna put it into the bottom of the spool. The tail of the thread is at the left, and then you're going to flip this net up and over the bottom, and then your thread tail will come out of the top already, okay? Now, when we put this on the machine and we thread, the machine, the net will provide enough tension to the spool to keep this in a nice straight line as it's pulled to the first thread guide and tension disc, okay? This can be used on cotton, polyester, rayon, I definitely use it on monofilament and I definitely use it on metallics. The reason that you put it in the bottom and flip it up, if you go over the top and go down, then you've got your hands in here trying to find the tail end and then you're gonna stretch your thread net out, okay? Thread nets come really long. You can cut them to um, get them to fit the spool. You don't want them to be exact. You want a little bit over it to help keep it on because if you cut it to just the size of the spool, eventually it kind of works itself off, okay? All right. That's a little about thread nets. Let me cross that off my list here. We've done thread nets. We've talked about upper thread. We talked about um, bobbin winding, bobbin threading, spool cap, thread stands. Okay. Now, on our seven and eight series, uh, my four, five, and seven series machines, um, for, for my Bernina owners, those are the machines that use this B9 hook, okay? There are times that this can get stuck and you're pushing the eject button and nothing is happening. And a couple of things are, is that it could have gone in just slightly cockeyed. There could also be thread wrapped around inside of the case. To free it up without, well, to try to free it up on your own and keep from coming here with it for me, you're going to remove your lever here on the left. You're gonna push it to the left your bobbin hook race cover is gonna come forward and you're gonna pull the entire hook out with the bobbin case attached. When you get it out, if it still doesn't eject when you are pushing on it, you're going to, um, give me one second, I don't have a, you're gonna take a little screwdriver. Let me grab one. You're gonna take like your little screwdriver Stay there. that came probably in your kit. You're going to 
in the hole in the bottom of this bobbin case, kind of push up. And then as you push on the eject button, it should release the bobbin case, okay? If it doesn't, and you tried it a couple times, do not take a screwdriver and start prying, okay? You'll destroy your bobbin case. Just pack this all up, piece of batting, wrap it in fabric, put it someplace safe because you don't want this to get broken, and bring it up to me, and I will free your bobbin from the hook. Just that. Okay. Yeah, I don't need the whole machine. I just need the hook and the bobbin. Okay. All right. That's the next thing. Stuck bobbins. The other thing that we get is some sensor issues. Okay. So your machines, most machines today, if they're computerized, have some sort of upper thread sensor or lower thread sensor on the machine meaning that if you are thread breaks in the top of the machine um, it will stop or if you run out of bobbin the um, machine will stop as well there we go so you've got let me show you typically you're going to get some sort of screen that looks like this that's telling you that it's like hey i don't see any um, upper thread. So it's telling you, let's take a look. First thing you're gonna do is don't yell at the machine like you're threaded. What do you mean there's no thread? Take a moment. There is um, one, there is a little, the actual sensor on the inside of the machine. And I'm gonna come over here. Let me flip this around because you don't need to see my face. On the inside, right below, this is where the take-up lever was, there is this little tiny loopy flag thing. I'll try to get here so you can see it, okay? That little guy. This guy right here, right there. If this guy is not moving, that's what triggers the sensor. This is your sensor. So don't unscrew this and go digging for it. You can unscrew this cover and take a look. If you pull on your thread, does this move? If it doesn't move when you pull on your thread, re-thread the machine. It's very possible that it's come out of this, this little sensor section or you missed it all together when, when you were sewing. This is your check spring. Yes, yes, Dr. Mike, it's your check spring. This check spring, okay, don't touch it. Don't try to bend it. Don't try to do anything. Just look to see if the thread is going through it, okay? The other thing is, is that if it's going through it and it's still kicking the sensor, it's something that we have to, the technicians need to adjust. So on computerized machines, we actually have the ability to turn these off, okay? And so you have the ability to turn them off so that you know your machine is fine, you know that you can sew, and there's nothing wrong with it, so let me show you how to turn it off. Every Bernina has, a, at least every Bernina in the last 10 years, I think, has some sort of personal setup option. It's gears, on a 730-200, it's gonna be a triangle with an arrow, and it lives on this side of your machine. So we're gonna go into gears, and we're looking for the eyeball. Or on a 730, 200, uh, 630, 640s, it could be uh, audio and message settings. So if we come in here, this is your upper thread sensor and this is your bobbin sensor. If the eyeballs are open or the dots, the lines are green, that means they are on and watching. If you don't want it to watch, you can make them close their eyes and they won't watch what you're doing, okay? And that, it's not gonna hurt anything. It just means that if your upper thread breaks or your bobbin runs out, the machine is not gonna stop to tell you. Not something I would do if I'm embroidering freestanding lace, okay? Because it is very hard to figure out where you were when you ran out of bobbin. But you do have the ability to turn these off. When you turn these off, 
um, on recent machines and you turn the machine back on, you will get a message telling you that you, these are disabled. It's just a reminder. If you're fine with them being disabled, hit the green check mark and keep on going. Okay, I'm going to turn them back on. Just like the bobbin sensor, the bobbin sensors on the machines live on the bobbin doors. So if your bobbin door is open, you're going to get the message telling you that you're at a bobbin because this sensor cannot see your bobbin. Okay. On the, on the machines that use this kind of bobbin case, Okay, this is my old, uh, my older 6 Series, 630s, 640s, 635s, 730s, 200s, 185s, 180, 165. Um, your bobbin sensors read these little openings. And if they're not going in the right direction, this can also cause your bobbin sensor to kick on. So if you're having issues with the sensor keep coming up, check to make sure that your bobbin is threaded with the dots spinning clockwise. And that's also why they don't like plastic bobbins. Okay. We don't use pre-wounds in Bernina machines with um, bobbin sensors because uh, they can't see through cardboard. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Those are sensors. All right. So let's take... A little walk and talk about a couple of other error messages on some newer very machines are very sophisticated ladies we want to keep up with technology and things like that so in order to do that we have lots of things on these machines that um, could be happening so if you are trying to do something and the machine is is requesting more power than it's capable of or anything along that lines, you're gonna get some sort of message, you're gonna get some sort of gears and things like that. So we see a lot of 1,000 and 10 tens, okay? Do not panic when you see main drive sync failure, please restart the machine, okay? Typically, the 1,000 and the 10 tens relate to your needle threader. So that just means that it's possible that the needle threader did not get all the way re-engaged at the top or something like that, which is why we don't do this to a needle threader, okay? This is a no-no. We are gently release your needle threaders. So if you're getting these error messages on your machines, push your needle threader down, push it back up, and we will restart the machine and the machine should restart without an issue if you try that a couple of times and it still doesn't happen then you will need to bring it in but 95 percent of the time that will fix that particular issue without a problem okay let's see if we fixed it there we go all we had to do is bring it down and let it go back up and that fixed it on a reboot the other thing that we see is amy i'm touching stitch number two and stitch number six or eight keeps highlighting or i'm touching things on my screen and nothing is happening so a lot of times we all have touch screens um, on computers and sewing machines and tablets we need to recalibrate we're pushing somewhere but it thinks we're pushing somewhere else so the machines have a, a way to ca get to calibration would be through the gears and then in the machine and then we can get into this icon. If you can figure out where you need to push on the screen to get that to activate. The other way to calibrate a screen is we're going to turn it off. We're going to hold in both needle position buttons so the two buttons below your stitch width and length knobs and we're going to keep them held in while the machine boots up let me get my stylus off the table okay it may feel like forever uh no the machine one on the tray just my stylus on the tray yeah i'm going to keep holding it in until we get this white screen with this crosshair you're going to take your stylus 
you're going to touch the center of the crosshair. It's going to move. You're going to touch the center of the crosshair, and then you're going to touch the center of the crosshair. Once you've touched it three times, the machine will finish booting up, and you should have access back to your touch screen without a problem. Okay. Now, let's travel over here because we're seeing a lot of calls about those little guys right there. Okay. People call them the gears of death, but they're not gears of death. They are there to protect you from hurting your machine or your machine from hurting itself. This is telling you that your machine is asking for more power or trying to do something that it is not capable of doing. It's got a jam somewhere and that we need to clear it, okay? So a lot of times clearing that jam may require you to completely disassemble. Do not yank, okay? If you have just recently hit your scissor cutter and this comes up, do not yank. Do not turn forcefully on this hand wheel. We are seeing a lot of bent thread cutters and, th and blades in, that in these machines. They are not cheap parts, ladies, okay? And they're not a warranty item. So we don't want to um, pull or yank. You're going to turn your machine off. You're going to completely disassemble it. So you're going to pop out your bobbin if you can get it out. See if I can get it out. You're going to take out the entire hook and see if you can get things easily freed. Once it's all freed, you can put it back together and turn your machine back on. Okay. We've got broken hand wheels recently. I mean, enough to break it on the inside. So just turn it off. And typically at that point, you need to turn it off and walk away for five minutes because you're ready to throw it out the window. You're just as frustrated as the machine is, okay? So with that being said, you um, should walk away from it if you're frustrated because nothing you do is going to fix it, okay? I can truly tell you if you own a straight stitch plate and you are sewing straight stitching, like piecing with a quarter inch foot or anything like that, I would highly suggest using your straight stitch plate, okay? So that's the plate that has the single hole in the middle, okay? Gives you a lot more support to your stitch and it's gonna keep those corners and things from getting sucked into the feed dogs, okay? So pull your straight stitch plates out and use them, okay? If you have a security program on your machine, you wanna make sure that you set it so that when you jump to a zigzag, you don't break a needle, okay? Straight stitch plates will be very helpful. The other thing that's going to be helpful, especially for those that are sewing masks and thick things, are these little plastic plates that are came with every Bernina. Now, whether they're still in your box or you've chucked them because you thought they were trash, these little guys are gonna help you get up and over thick sections. So, if you're sewing over like a bungee cord or you've got pleats and you're using four layers of fabric and it's sections, they are eight layers, you're going to want to use these little guys. So, I'm gonna show you how these guys get used, okay? So we're gonna hand the camera off here. So I've got, basically here, I've got a pair of hemmed jeans. And at this point of the hem, it would be like eight layers of denim. And so what would happen is, what happens is that as you are sewing and your presser foot starts to go uphill, Okay, what happens is this foot starts to lift up and the needle starts deflecting off of the presser foot. This is when you usually hear that crunch and that clunk, 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 clunk. Your stitching is all messed up and it doesn't look pretty. So we need to help level this presser foot back out. So when your foot starts to increase like this, we stop, we put our needle down, we're gonna raise our foot and we're gonna take our plastic plates. 
we call them height compensating plates. They're also called hump jumpers, whatever you want, Gina jig, anything like that. You're going to either use one, two, or three, depending on how much you need to use to get your foot to level. You're going to slide them in the back of the foot, up at the needle. You're going to put your foot back down. You'll see that your foot is now level, and you will continue to sew across the top, and it's nice and pretty. It'll go through those layers without you having to push or pull or cross your fingers and hope. You break needles, it just doesn't look good. As it comes off the front, we don't typically have as much issue coming down the mountain as we have climbing the mountain, but I will um, move my height compensating plates to the front and I'll just kind of help and move them along as my foot comes down off the back of the fabric. You don't want to leave them there because the machine will very easily sew through all three of these pieces of plastic like it was nothing. Okay, so these are going to be helpful when you are sewing through thick stuff. Okay, whether it's a bag, hemming jeans, sewing pleats and masks, bungee cord, whatever, this is going to be your friend. Okay, takes a little more time, but your machine will like it much better. Okay, now, got that one off. I have one little embroidery. Um, thing to point out because we've had a couple of questions. I usually get a lot of phone calls about this. This screen right here, do what it says. Okay. Usually you get this when you first start embroidering. Okay. On Bernina's because the machine has no idea where the arm of the module is and it doesn't, will not find and locate itself if there is an embroidery hoop attached. So we're going to follow what the screen says. It's telling us to take our hoop off. You're going to then, it's telling you that it's going to move. You're going to hit the green check. The module arm will move. It may move a little. It may move a lot. And then it's telling you to put the, the hoop back on. It's going to move again and hit the green check mark. And then it will move into place and you'll be ready to embroider. So follow the steps, including pushing the green check marks. Okay. That's one key. Now I do have my eight series owners. I told you earlier that you don't have that screw here on the side. That's what you have this little guy for. This guy, this little portion of this multi-purpose tool slides in this slot. You push carefully. Oop. See if I can do this one handed and your service door will open. Okay, and then you'll be able to see if your take up lever is threaded. Okay, and that will help um, you know if you hit the sensor, hit the um, threading correctly. Okay, and then it just snaps back on. I'll get that in a minute. I can't, I can't do everything one handed. Now, the other thing is, is that my eight series owners, you don't have the ability to take out and disassemble the entire hook system. Okay, you can't take out your bobbin case and all that's all built in. And if you get a jam and you can't, don't know how to clear it, you have this tool. This tool, one, is very, very sharp right here. And it is meant to um, help you clear. So what happens is, is we want to use the back side of this goes down behind. Let me see if I can show you kind of behind the bobbin case and the machine and you get it in there and you kind of swipe to the right and you can swipe left and this little sharp guy is meant to cut threads that could be knotted up behind the bobbin case that you can't get access to and then you can use tweezers and things to be able to pull out the rest of the thread um, and free it up the other thing that you have on an 8 series machine if you're having a bobbin sensor issue or you've put a bobbin in the machine and the machine keeps telling you that there's an issue with it it is very possible uh, both on the seven the larger jumbo seven four five seven series bobbins and these eight series bobbins they have these this metal on it you want to take care of using these and not get these scratched 
If these start to wear out or get scratched, then this, this is what the, mach, the bobbin sensor reads in these machines to know that there's a bobbin in it. So if you're having an issue with a bobbin, take it out and use a different bobbin and see if you can get it to bypass. So you don't want to take your bobbins and toss them all in the bottom of a bag. You wanna keep them stored in a box, okay? Or in a bobbin ring or someplace safe so that you're not keeping them with your scissors and your pins to get scratched up, okay? The other thing is, is you wanna handle your bobbins by the sides, okay? Or as much of your, as little of your fingerprints on here because some of us are oilier if you use a lot of lotion and things like that. The um, chemicals in your lotions and things like that can also cause um, these to start to wear. We don't see it as much today, but those of you that have been using this 8 Series bobbin for a while, some of our original older bobbins um, start to wear. And you just wind your bobbins, these old bobbins, for using um, for hand sewing your binding. Okay, and then you don't have to take spools of thread and things like that when they quit working on your machine. Now, yes, so on an 8 series machine, the biggest thing is that when you thread the machine, you give me a spool of thread, mom. Um, there is a pause that you want to do, and if you do this pause, you will be way more successful at properly um, threading your machine if I can get, let me hand this to mom here. Okay. So you're going to come, just, just focus right here, up and you're going to hang out here until you see, and the machine's not going to cooperate with me okay. at the moment, until you see this light pop on. And this is your needle threader light. Okay, when this light illuminates, then you can follow the rest of your threading path on the 8 series machine and then you'll be pressing this button. If you just immediately go from here and quickly follow across the top of the machine, you don't give this, your take up lever, the, the amount of time it needs to get to the right position so that you can hit it. Okay, and take away your hands. I hope that makes sense. And then the other thing is, is when my 8 Series owners, when you hit that needle threader button, mm -hmm. sit on your fingers. Mm -hmm. Keep your hands out of the way. Don't try to grab anything. You want to keep that area clear because you don't want that needle threader to hit um, your hand or a project or anything like that because it probably won't go back to where it belongs and then you can't sew. And remember that needle threader should not be threading a needle smaller than a 75. Okay, if it's smaller than a 75 that you're using, you need to be um, manually threading that with um, your hands and your eyeballs. And there is one extra step, so refer to your owner's manual um, if you have to manually thread, and like for a double needle or anything like that as well. Okay, do I have questions? Boy, I think I talked way longer than I thought I was gonna talk. Um, Let's see. Ooh, lots of things. Let's see. Do, 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 do. There's Sam. Yes. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, a lot of nesting doing Kimberbell masks. Um, that, it, I don't know what, I haven't made one, to be honest. I, um, the, um, one on a seven, on the newer Bruninas, I would probably raise my presser foot height. If you are trying, if you raise your presser foot height, it will help keep that foot from getting caught in the pleats. And it, that could be part of the problem with the thread nesting. Um... Okay, so Stacy, on your machine, do you have the tie-on, tied start um, tie-on option on machines? So let me show on the seven and eight series machines. 
well, five, seven, and eight series machines. Under sewing settings, this little guy right here is your tie-on. And this is an automatic knot that's gonna happen when you uh, start sewing. And so if you have a tendency to not start with the first stitch right into fabric and you have this setting on, you can cause a knot to build up in the air and then have an issue when you go to start really sewing. So if you like this feature, obviously you want the knot to happen in the fabric. So you need to make sure that your first stitch is going to go into fabric. So when you do that, let me get my needle up here. I may have to be out of the screen. Needle up. So you wanna make sure that you've got your fabric back so that it's gonna take the first stitch is gonna happen right in fabric. And if that is the case, then you won't have any other issues um, with that knotting that's there. Jennifer, on your eight series, you won't need a spool cap because of the vertical thread stand. Um, if you're using something that doesn't want to cooperate and stay in place, you can, but um, I, w I don't typically on my eight series machine use a spool cap. Okay. Let's see. Miss Judy, on an eight series, the sensors are in the same, the upper thread and lower thread sensors are in the same place. It's the same eyeballs and settings um, that are in the gears. Um, if you can't find it, uh, just send me a message and I will um, pull up my 830 emulator and send you a video with the exact steps on where to find it. Um, Miss Colleen, if you're getting that after you've started the machine and after you've threaded it, it just means that your needle threader is not getting reseated properly and it may need some adjustment. But just just don't let it don't flick it up. Let just carefully let go of the needle threader. It happens a lot if we just take our hands off and it slams into place. So just um yep, be a little more gentle. Gears of life, it's the gears of life, not the gears of death. It's helping it stay alive. Um, yep, no yanking. <laughs> yeah, I usually, ex people have no idea what those height compensating, um, height compensating plates were for. They usually live in the drawer, the white drawer of your Barbie box, and nobody ever knows that they're there because they blend in. Um, Um, Jennifer, no, there's nothing wrong with sewing with that service door on the 8 Series off. We actually really wish that they would make a clear one so that, one, you could still see through it without uh, um, accidentally maybe getting your hair caught in equipment as you're down at the machine and your head is now right there, all that exposed take-up lever. Um, so hoping that one day they'll, they'll give us a clear one. Yes, Miss Carol, the empty bobbin case boxes are here. They arrived um, earlier this week and I was saving them. I purchased them empty because one, they're way cheaper than buying them with 25 bobbins in them. And I know you all have a ton of bobbins already. So um, we do have the Bernina bobbin boxes now are available and... They are $30 with, um, they will fit the four, five, and seven, and eight series bobbins. So the big black jumbo um, B9 bobbins. So they're $30. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. So I didn't talk about, you do uh, cleaning the thread cutter. Thank you, Miss Giselle. On the four, five, and seven series machines that have automatic thread cutters, okay, we have a built-in message that comes up after the thread cutter has cut um, a couple hundred times. I can't remember exactly. So that message comes up and you can 
it will come up when you first boot up the machine. If you're not in the mood and everything is fine and you want to do it next time, just bypass it and um, do it later. It'll keep coming on until you clear it. So there is um, in the setup to get to it, we're in gears and wrenches and it's the broom. And so what's going to happen is you got to read the pictures, read the words, because we're going to press the blue link, okay? And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to push the scissors on the head of the machine. And that's your thread cutter that just moved out, okay? This moving it out allows you to then use a pair of tweezers, okay, or a uh, lint brush or anything to get any of those thread, uh, stray thread tails out, especially if your thread cutter stops cutting. And then when you've got everything clear, you come back up and you click the link, move thread catcher in, and then you push the scissors again and everything goes back. After you've done that, the counter has reset and you are ready to put it back together and continue using it. Okay, so that's going to come up. And if you're having an, an issue with your thread cutting or anything like that, um, the first thing I would do would be to clean it. And then after that, it would, it, if it's still not doing it, the um, issue could be um, a little deeper, could be yanking and we think something's bent. So uh, let's see. Uh... So, the lost presser foot steps, Miss Pat, is a presser foot sensor in the machine that basically t is what tells the machine um, that you have a foot on and what foot it is and things like that. So, when you're getting that message, it's possible that your presser foot sensor is getting ready to go bad. Um, it happens. Uh, so, it's not hurting anything just to clear it out and um, keep going until it doesn't quit coming up. And then if, when it gets to a point where it won't sew anymore. Um, but as long as you know that you're doing a stitch that that foot is capable of, you're okay until we can get um, that fixed on your machine. The vertical spool pin on your 200, Jennifer? No, I don't ever use a spool cap on my vertical spool pins just because usually the by the time you put the foam pad and the spool on top, you can't usually get to the spool cap. Um, so I very rarely will use a spool cap on the vertical. Mostly on the um, horizontal spool pin do I use a spool cap. Um, yes, I will go back afterwards and, and get everybody's bobbin boxes and um, put it... Um, no, the 8 Series, Miss Jennifer, does not have a... Um, thread cutter cleaning because your thread cutter is completely different on the eight series than it is on the four, five, and sevens in the way that it cuts. So that's why on an eight series, all those thread tails end up back behind the bobbin and then you can clean them out at any time. Whereas on the four, five, and sevens, it's just a different cutter. So we don't have to clean it like we do uh, those machines. Mm. Do, 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 do. And the same for you, Miss Judy. No thread, no thread cleaning on that. All right. I, oh, one last thing. When you are putting in needle screws, let's talk about this little screwdriver right here, or this little screw right here, okay? This little screw is, let me get it out here. Yep. Let me get that out here. Now, not all machines, get my hand out of the way, sorry. Some of the machines today uh, have gone back to a thumb screw. Uh, this screw, okay, has an end on it, looks like this, nice and pointy. That point is what is holding the needle in place, okay? It's also a little uh, magnetic, okay? When you are putting your screw in and you are screwing this needle in, okay, 
This does not need to go in with superhero strength. Do not turn this so tight, okay, that you are like using a force to get it to tighten. It just needs to be tightened to a point where you just start to feel you can't go, that you've hit the needle and that you can't really go any further. If you over tighten this a lot over time, you're going to break the end off that needle screw. And when that happens, that means an entirely new needle bar. Okay, because if that tip breaks off inside of here and you can get this end out, but that little untreaded, un, yeah, untreaded point is still in here, you can't get it out. And that means that the entire needle bar has to be replaced. So you don't want to be so loose that it's going to fall out when you're sewing, but you don't need to like use those muscles to tighten it super tight. Okay. I hope, all right, I think I have most of it. The replay will be in there. I will also download this and upload it to uh, YouTube um, and they'll stay there forever. Remember, we will be doing this again tomorrow night at seven o'clock um, and it will be not this topic. Unless you have further questions about oiling or maintenancing something that I can cover for everybody, please email me any questions. Thank you, Miss Virginia. She's already sent me some questions um, for, ans for, um, for answering tomorrow um, about USB sticks and design information. So please, please just email them to the store. You can even Facebook message them to the, from the, to the store's Facebook page. Um, that's fine too. And that just gives me a little bit of time that I may not have to dance quite on my feet when you submit them, um, during the actual live, uh, this will help me, um, prepare for it, uh, and be able to maybe have some examples and another computer screen up so that I can walk you through steps of, uh, formatting USB sticks, saving designs and things like that. So, I really appreciate um, everybody joining me tonight. I hope you have a um, wonderful rest of your evening. I hope I answered some questions and taught some new stuff this evening. And we will see you tomorrow. Um, we will be probably back live from my sewing room and not from the Bernina showroom tonight. Okay. Um, but I am headed home. And you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. And we'll see you tomorrow, um, Friday, April 10th at 7 p.m. Thank you, guys.